comes to climate change, increased severity of natural disasters like hurricanes or wildfires get most of the attention. But a new study by MIT reveals even more mundane weather patterns are being affected. The research finds pollution is lingering longer over cities, and summer thunderstorms are becoming more powerful. That could mean serious impacts on human health and infrastructure. The lead author of that study, Charles Gertler, joins us now from Cambridge, Massachusetts. He's a PhD candidate in climate physics and chemistry at MIT. Charles, thank you for joining us. A lot of degrees you have there. So clearly you're the person to talk to. Uh, walk us through the key findings of your study, if you will, and tell us how it differs from what we already know about climate change. Sure, happy to, and thanks so much for having me. So basically, we found a way to connect changes in temperature and humidity from climate change to changing summer weather patterns that we're experiencing at our latitudes. And um, we found that because of climate change and its unique structure, uh, the reservoir of energy that's available to large-scale weather systems has gone down about 6% since 1979, while the reservoir of energy that's available to produce thunderstorms has gone up about 13% in the, in the same time period. So let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that more temperate climates now are seeing the impacts of climate change. Is that correct? So, so where we live, we call the extra tropics. It's, mm -hmm. it's the area poleward of 20 degrees um, in the northern and southern hemisphere. And we're seeing a weakening of the general circulation. Um, well, at the same time, so these are the kind of low pressure systems that come through on a sort of two day to weekly time scale. Um, at the same time, we're seeing a strengthening in the energy that's available to the kind of summer thunderstorms that you right. might experience. Yeah. So how does that impact then sort of, you know, human life? You say one of the one of the impacts is that it increases pollution or at least keeps it, you know, in the cities longer. And those thunderstorms that you're talking about getting stronger. What is the end result of that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a really important question. And I think the, on the one hand, you have a larger fraction of rain um, coming from thunderstorms in the summer at our latitudes. So it just changes the basic experience of summer weather. On the other hand, other work um, by, by other researchers has shown that because of the weakening large scale systems, air is ventilated out of American cities in the summer with lower frequency than it, it used to be. So actually air pollution is worse than it should be given all of our good air quality policy. That's not a direct result of our paper. Our paper simply connects the changing temperature and humidity structure of the atmosphere to the changing weather patterns that then can lead to changes in, in smog and thunderstorms. So getting back to these summer thunderstorms though, are they leading to increased flooding? Un unclear, I think it's hard to say from, from this paper um, whether, whether this will increase flooding, but it'll definitely just increase, it'll change the, the nature of, of rain that we get in the summer. And is there anything that we can do at this point to curb these effects? Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, well, these are changes, like I said, that are driven by the specific structure of warming that we get from, mm -hmm. from climate change. And the only way to curb effects is, is by reducing how much CO2 we put into the atmosphere. Uh, how we do that, though, is a question for policymakers and, and, and voters. Right. OK, so I just want to get back quickly to the, the question of the smog, because that does worry me living in a big city like New York City. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, how, the smog that sort of exists now is not a result of the climate change. It's just not being able to circulate out of the cities as easily it was, as it was before. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So we, we have actually a lot of good air quality policy in this country. And we have generally air quality in cities has, has improved over the last uh, 40 years since the Clean Air Act. Um, and so other work has shown that the, the decreasing ventilation out of cities has meant that this improvement is slower than it should be. Well, that is a bummer because, you know, we uh, we live in a city here in New York, so I'm sorry to hear that. But hopefully we can get a handle on this climate change and, and, and figure some stuff out. But Charles Gortler, thank you so much for bringing our attention to this. Thanks for having me, Tanya.